My guest this week is Tom from Tom Lumley and the Brave Liaison. How you doing? I said I'm good, man. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Good. Uh, the, I'm not going to miss doing these kind of interviews. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the thing. We've done things like this or like the odd like acoustic live stream and you realise it's just pause for a second. You're like, what? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not going to miss it. <laughs> okay, so it's been a while since we've kind of chatted just in general, I think. We haven't seen each other in a while. Yep. We've both been very busy with our own thing. Obviously, your, your band's been blowing up all over the place. Radio 1, so many radios picking up your stuff, especially Radio 1, actually. Uh, getting a couple of plays in there for all of your most recent singles. It kind of seems like it's all just happened overnight for you, in a way, but it hasn't. <laughs> no, definitely been like... For me as an artist, it was quite a while, but now as a band, it's been even now, I think three years now as a band, um, which has gone so fast. It feels like everything's starting to fall into place. So we've just got to keep on doing what we're doing and keep the, the momentum going and the pressure on, I guess. That's that's the aim. Yeah, because I originally met you back in 2016. Yeah, it probably would have been around then. Yeah, probably the, the later end of 2016. You obviously had the band with you for most of your shows then. It was a different lineup then. Yeah. Now you've got like a more yeah. stable lineup, um, which you've been with yeah. for the past three years. And yeah, you've, you've obviously been in the music scene, I want to say 2014, 2015. I think it was in the UK, probably 15. I've always been gigging, but before that I was gigging a lot in Spain because I was living over there. Yeah. Um, it was probably, fifth, I think it was 2015 when I came back to the UK, Yeah. which is mad. That's gone very fast, but yeah, at the start it was so different, like just me and an acoustic guitar, and then like you say, eventually um, different members to the one that are there, ones that we have now, and it was all under just my name before, and now obviously we've got a full band name, which is just made sense. Like you said, the boys have been around now for quite a while. We're, we're stuck together, really. We all get on so well, and we work as a band, so they needed to have some sort of part of the name. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what I want to kind of touch on is that while you've been, you know, doing, you originally started off solo and then you got the band and that type of thing, you've been going quite a while. Not many people probably know that. And I think a good thing about that is that it kind of set up a kind of solid foundation of support for your music doing that from the beginning. Yeah, definitely. And you kind of have like a, a core fan base that's kind of always been there from the beginning. Yeah, I think it's something that, myself and you would have seen growing Cambridge being from Cambridge it was like a, a core fan base from the start friends and family and then and then started as you sort of we found as we sort of created hype with friends and family at gigs just more people would get involved because of the atmosphere that was there and stuff it made people want to get involved and that built up a real core fan base in Cambridge and then over the last couple of years it's just all been about building in cities further away and, and spreading it across the country I'd say it's so important um too many bands these days that want to just jump straight to to being at the top but i don't think that's a way to sustain the, a career in the industry you have to build up like you say a core fan base that are going to stick around that have been there from the start that actually care not just they've bought an album because it's been pushed in their face by itunes or something like that yeah and that's what i was going to touch on really is that i think fans feel a bit more invested if they've kind of been there for the journey and the long haul kind of a bit more because obviously yeah you do want to pick up new fans along the way but yeah, you do kind of find that when a band is pushed from like zero to to a hundred, that they pick up a lot of casual fans that just kind of dip in and out yeah. and don't really yeah. like stick around for the long haul, really. Definitely, a hundred percent. You've only got to look at bands like I Monkeys or Catfish in the Bottom and that worked. Like Catfish in the Bottom and gig for I've used this example quite a few times recently in interviews, but they gigged for ten years before they really started to break through. And that was just them building up a fan base all the way around the UK, constantly gigging around the UK. And it shows now because there's bands that have maybe got as big as them three years ago, but those bands have stayed the same or dropped off and, and Catfish are just getting bigger and bigger, selling out outdoor shows like Finsbury Park size shows now and stuff like that, which is brilliant. So I think you, you've only got to look at the industry to see the ones that do it fast, they do it on a very X Factor type style. I'd say that you're just quickly chucked in front of everyone. And as we know with X Factor, the odd person has, has lasted in the industry, like One Direction boys. But other than that, it doesn't tend to work because there's no right. real connection. Yeah. And I think as well, what I want to touch on is that, you know, when you were kind of doing the local scene, 
in those beginning kind of years, you sort of hooked up with a certain couple of bands, like naming a few, like Hollow Star, The Extons, and you all kind of supported each other, playing kind of the right shows at the right time, supporting each other with release shows, that type of stuff. And I think that was a big part in the success of that because you kind of always had uh, a reason to play these shows, which always made them a bit more special and made people want to turn out to them. Definitely. I think it, we, it, it's, it's maybe slightly different now because, I mean, we, we talk to the Hollow Star boy, boys daily or weekly and we all get on really well still, but they've blown up in, their, in the rock side of the industry and we've maybe yeah. go more down the indies, which was expected. We, you're gonna, early on in your career in a local scene, you always play gigs with bands that maybe you wouldn't fit on the lineup in the big scale, but that's how it is. And like you say, we, between us, them, Searching Grey, Oscar Corny, The Extants, um, the Rose Affair, I think we all built up a, a community which we loved yeah. it because we were, we were all friends and we all get on and we also even if we weren't gigging together we'd go and watch each other's gigs but I think people from the outside saw that and they saw like a buzz and, and something that they wanted to be part of and that's what brought more people and, and fans to to all of our shows there's, there's people that go to to watch Oscar and then me and, and Hollow Star that none of us knew before getting out and playing shows and we're all very different music, but they were sucked into and loved the whole community and family sort of vibe of it. Yeah, exactly. And you were all kind of different genres and, and that type of thing, but you were all solid musicians live. And I think that's what connected the audience to to everyone, whoever was playing on the lineup. You know, you all complimented each other really well. And yeah. and yeah, you're all solid live. So that's why I think the fans kind of crossed over, I think. Yeah, definitely. And some of those earlier nights at the Corner House or, or the Portland Arms were gigs that I will remember like for the rest of my life. Like, like you say, I remember there being nights where it would be funny how different gigs for different people as well. There was one night where me and you were at Searching Grey at the Corner House, and that yeah. night just felt like yeah, eighty people in the Corner House felt like eighty thousand people at Reading Main Stage. The energy was just. Yeah, I remember room. that show. That was there was something yeah. special about that. I don't know what it was, but yeah, it was just the room was just buzzing. It, they had they had everyone in that audience in the palm of their hands. Nick, yeah, did, definitely. Um, actually, yeah, Nick, we all know what Carl's like. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, yeah, and it was it was the same for I think Holly Star's EP release at the Portland. Portland yeah. Arms, yeah, yeah. That yeah. night was just buzzing, and yeah, I think. And that's what kind of, you know, helped this platform grow as well, because I was kind of coming in to the scene at that point when yeah. all of you guys were, there was just so much hype around all of those bands at the same time. And I was lucky enough to sort of come in and, you know, get to know all you guys and, and, uh, and well, talk to you, you at the right time, I think. You did so much for us, which we, you know how grateful we all are for it. You've, give, you've given us a platform um, for all the bands that you still, that you're supporting now and, and still us guys you're giving us a platform to be able to promote the music and you, you've always been creative with your ideas like all the different things we've done sat in the car looking at cds they're in the car everything yeah, it's, yeah. It's just, i think you had the right mentality to build a good platform and that's exactly what you've done yeah but i also had a lot of people just just willing to just come on and and just talk and just try new yeah. things and and yeah, just be open to, to those ideas. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of great that we've all kind of helped each other and, you know, obviously yeah. I'd still talk to the Hollow Star boys and, and yeah, it's, it's just really cool to see everyone succeeding in their own way and, and doing, yeah. you know, what, what they want to do at the end of the day is, is so good to see that. Definitely. I mean, we are, obviously it hasn't been a thing at the moment, but I'd love to do a gig with Hollow Star and Oscar. just like, or, yeah. or even if we could get Search Grey to come back as well, like all of us together again. Um, yeah, yeah, just one night only. That would be, yeah. Brilliant. Be brilliant. Yeah. Uh, it, it will happen one day. It will happen one day. <laughs> yeah, just, just do it at the corner house as well. Just turn up. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? Oh, if, we did, if we did that at the corner house, that would be... Yeah, just announce it on the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be so good. Yeah, so that would be insane. <laughs> Yeah. Let's briefly talk about uh, the members of your band and kind of what yeah. they bring to the table uh, for you. Yeah. Okay. So we've got Johnny on drums. Johnny's funny one. Uh, he was so young when 
we brought him into the band. I think he was only just turned 18 and he's just grown as a person with the band. He kind of looks um, the oldest. <laughs> yeah, I know. He does look the oldest now, which is scary. When he, I've seen photos when he first came into the band and he didn't. But now, with his light his beard and stuff, he, yeah. looks the oldest. he was always a good drummer. But as the band's gone on, he's become like solid. Johnny, Johnny brings a lot to the band in the sense of he always knows someone if we need like lights last minute for a video shoot or something like that. So he's very handy to have around and just he's pretty good with electrics. Anything goes wrong, he can sort of fix it. So he, he brings <laughs> a solid back- in the band. <laughs> yeah, he brings a solid backbone behind the kit and to the band in general with uh, problem fixing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what you need. Yeah, exactly. We all need a Johnny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that sound is so bad <laughs> oh well yeah it, i mean again so, true <laughs> yes again. Um, <laughs> safety first <laughs> <laughs> and then billy um billy's happy all the time he definitely brings the good vibes yeah constant, definitely. yeah constant vibes he's up his backing vocals are flawless and he's a great bass player He's just good fun to have around. He's always happy that when we finish playing, just to like be the first person there stood behind the merch table, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just talk, talking to people. Um, yeah, he's, he's a very, very chatty guy. He's always got like a good story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It always ends up being me and him behind the merch table. And it just sometimes the stories he starts telling, I'm like, why are you telling people <laughs> that story? But he just loves talking. He loves talking. Yeah, no, he's a, yeah, he's a great guy. Then obviously Jake, we all you know exactly what Jake does. He's yeah. what, for one one of I shouldn't say this because he doesn't need telling this, but he's <laughs> not just because he's in in the band that I'm in, but he's one of the best lead guitarists that I've ever seen and had the pleasure of working with. He's incredible. What we do as a band doesn't show off what he can do as a guitarist. It's like he does things in rehearsals that you just make you go wow. Um, and besides that, he's also Obviously, he runs his own recording studio, which is where we record all our music. Myself and Jake write the songs together, so Jake's a big part of the band. Everything we release, everything that people hear comes from myself and Jake, and then through Jake in the studio, and we all record it there. If yeah. we didn't have Jake paying someone else, <laughs> probably <laughs> a lot more money to record us. So having yeah. Jake in the band, a space, even a space for us to be able to demo properly. Um, we can get really good sound in demos, obviously, because of Jake's knowledge. And yeah. that's so helpful when it comes to sending it to industry or our label and stuff for advice and what to go with. Because you can easily send an acoustic track and they really like one over the other, but that doesn't mean that what the track's going to turn into is going to be better than the other. And being able to to demo with Jake makes it a lot easier. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And obviously he, he's got a great, great live room, uh, as some yeah. people may know because we, we kind of yeah. use that from time to time. Uh, yes. And I think we should, while we're on the note of the live room, we should also include, because he really has, he is a fifth member of the band, Sam Lance. Yeah, I was um, going to mention him, yes, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah, he's, he, uh, is, he is your new member, I guess. A hundred percent, like, he's mm-hmm. just, as you know, and anyone who's, who follows Local Distortion, Sam Lance's work behind the camera is just in, yeah. insane. He's phenomenal an absolute genius and he's we're so lucky that he's so on board with us and what we're doing um comes on all the tours with us he's done our music videos um live sessions like literally we've been working on something this week for someone and we got a message and it was like right in five days we've got to record a live session in an open space socially distanced and just yeah. putting it to them and he's made it work like straight away yeah which is which is which is brilliant. I didn't think we'd bring on someone camera-wise that would fit so well with the band as well. It just, we all get on so well. It is literally like having a fifth member. Yeah, and uh, he, he's such a great guy as well. He's, you he's, cannot meet a nicer guy. Yeah, he, like, he's, he's just so down to earth. Uh, yeah, he's just, he's just a great guy. He's so patient as well and just, he's always in control, it seems. He, he just knows yeah. what needs to be done and and how to do it and how to approach things. Exactly. I've learned I've learned so much from just being around him and, and seeing yeah. what he does and and that type of thing. And, and yeah, I'm really, really grateful that I get to kind of work with him as well, uh, doing doing live sessions with, with him and Jake as well. When yeah. they're not when they're not doing stuff with you, they're they're kind yeah. of lumped into doing stuff with me. So. Yeah. I know. 
Um, that, but yeah, no, it's it's really cool that he can kind of feel like he probably is the the fifth member as well because then it yeah. creates better results. I think when you have I that think, relationship with someone, definitely. And I think for us as a band, it's definitely uh, our social media was doing good and growing, but the level and the standard of the content that we've been putting out since probably September last year has been a step up because of Sam. And I feel like that's really yeah. impressed people. When people are sharing things, more people are, yeah. are looking at it because it looks so good and then getting on board. And so it's definitely added so much to the band, which a lot of bands don't think, don't realise necessarily how important it is for yeah. for things to look, look as good as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he, he just brings such a professional style with yeah. everything and I, I, you can you I, can kind of just instantly tell it's him with the with the color grades that he uses yeah. as well yeah. he, he's very he's very kind of aware to always not do the same thing twice as well which is really yeah. really cool he's always kind of pushing those boundaries to uh to try different things exactly and he's always in the middle of a gig he'll do something and and we it won't even be an idea that we've come up with and he'll just just do something in the middle of a gig and he'll show us the footage he's got and it just looks insane like there's not been a single thing so far that he's done that we haven't gone like sometimes maybe we've gone oh it needs to just be a little bit lighter on the faces or something but never mm. everything he does he sends it to you and you just go wow he's done exactly, <laughs> exactly what we said or we envisioned or wanted he's literally just nailed it and better like most of the time so yeah yeah i hope to this because he's been bigged up big time. <laughs> yeah and it doesn't inflate his ego as well he's he's so no, down to earth about everything no he's i think he's the best guy within yeah. i don't know i want to say the whole of the uk I don't, I don't think anyone's as good as him of what he can do right now i think he's kind yeah. of untouchable <laughs> yeah i mean we've worked with a That's lot it's gonna really guys. like make his head big but yeah <laughs> You could never imagine him being big-headed or, or no. getting angry or aggressive or anything. Those sort of things just aren't in Sam. Sam's just nice, yeah. straight. Because that's what I was like really scared of when I first started working with him. I was like, oh, God, like he wants me to film as well. It's like, yeah. oh, it's like, is he going to like be yeah. mad with my footage or anything? But no, he's just, yeah, he's just so cool. And yeah, he's always got yeah. really good advice. And, and yeah, he's just so chill. He's just, yeah, so easy to work with. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, obviously he's done your past three music videos, I want to say. Yeah, music videos now. But then he's, um, he's done a couple of live sessions, uh, like tour video stuff, uh, yeah. like diary stuff. I guess we we should probably talk about the casual music video. Because, yeah, it was. Because obviously that is one take. How difficult was that to kind of put together? I feel like that video is probably one of the best things we've done as a band. Um and it really set a benchmark for everything we did afterwards, which was kind of hard in a way. <laughs> um, yeah. It was a really weird situation. We'd been asked to go and film um, a session, like it was at made available for BBC, which was insane. And we needed a cameraman very last minute. So we were stuck. The people that we had used before couldn't do it for whatever reason. And Tristan, our manager, was like, I message um, a guy called Sam Lance, who we had met before, but never really spoke to him much. And literally he was like yeah i can come and then that was it was from there where it just continued to build and that day we were like right we need to do a music video as well sam and tristan had already been thinking about using sam and we we're in the van coming back from made and he was like there's i'm not going to be able to fit in with the time scale you've got and we said that's fair enough and then the the venue that we used as a family members of mine's house and we were going back there just because that's where i kind of keep like some of my guitars and stuff for space which is very lucky to have that space to leave them there um we were because yeah, they wouldn't fit in my little house <laughs> and we took we turned up and sam literally just sat in the room and was like we could do something in here and i can do it quick it has to be one take and we can yeah. do it and he just this idea just boomed in his in his head and next minute we filmed it we did like the whole morning rehearsing uh so that it would flow in one take and i think it was like the second take or something like that that we were just all like yep mm. that Good. that was it we did a few more afterwards and he ended up going backwards to the second tape was... <clears throat> yeah i think i remember him saying it was i think you shot about 13 in total i think maybe yeah. some of those were like walkthroughs maybe uh yeah yeah because yeah i i remember i i was in the car with him heading to to jake's like maybe yeah, a couple yeah. weeks after you'd filmed it and i was like nudging him i was like come on how many how many takes did it 
did it take? And yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I was still very surprised it was that little. Yeah. Because obviously that's, that's a big task to kind of do that and get it and get it right. It was. And I think there was, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he used the second take eventually, which was the one that we all liked. And then there was like the third or the fourth, which was as good, but we realised that something hadn't been left in the right place, which is when you're constantly going through it, like, like a drum in a drawer in a kitchen that you yeah. pulled out. <laughs> Things like that. And remembering to put them back there sometimes was the issue. So yeah. I, was, yeah. I, I was quite happy with how fast we did it. Yeah. And, and, and coming up with those little spots, like, was that you guys coming up with that? Or was it like, did you brainstorm um, some ideas? Or? The majority of it was Sam. We yeah. kind of had an idea, roughly. We all sat down. His little mind went, both we could do a video in here. And the next minute, there's me, Tristan, Sam, and Jake sat around this table, just like, and this could be here, this could be here. <laughs> Within an hour, we, we had it all like in place. Um, there was one or two ideas that Sam had that we wanted slightly different. But, yeah, it was kind of a mixed thing, but mainly Sam. Sam was a genius behind it. Like, he just, it was mad watching. You could just look at him and see his head, ticking as soon as he walked in the room it was like you think he's thinking something and then next minute he went we can do a music video and we can do it in here and he just said <laughs> no to us and we were like hey, all right let's do it <laughs> and yeah it's an incredible music video it just comes together so well and yeah the layout of the house is just perfect for for that kind of style of video i think yeah it's you, kind can, of you can really you can fun. you can kind of zoom out as well and the the rooms are obviously all open plan as well which really helps yeah <laughs> like exactly that. It was it was nice to do it in there, yeah. <laughs> so what's what's like your favourite little part of that video? I don't know. There's quite a lot. I, I think when Jake and Billy are stood on the like the island kitchen bit with like the sink and yeah. stuff. I think that's pretty. I epic. just love that. Yeah, yeah, it's just funny. <laughs> it just turns around and you don't expect them to be there, and then they're just yeah. It I was, think... Do you know what was even funny? I can tell you what was funny. It was watching them quick run from wherever they were like the living room or something and then trying to climb up onto the side behind yeah. the camera to be time for yeah we need to see some outtakes of um yeah <laughs> of like someone else <laughs> filming them get in position that would be brilliant yeah, literally sam's got a lot of outtakes from a lot of things which are quite funny to, be fair. We need to put them together. <laughs> yeah and that's like the best thing about uh when we do our sessions like we get so many funny outtakes just yeah, <laughs> yeah. like fuck ups and things like that so yeah uh, yeah, maybe we should release them eventually. Yeah, that's the thing. There's so many things you do where you're like, oh, I wish we had that one on camera. But when Sam's there, it's always on camera. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. it. It, yeah. He's always got it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then obviously you did Shrink as well. I think that was kind of that was kind of a tight shoot as well, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm trying to remember now, if I'm honest. It's weird. It feels like so the EP has been such a long build up, and so much has happened with it that everything's kind of blurred into one now for for me personally. In a good way, it's been we didn't expect the EP to achieve what it achieved at, at all. Like you said earlier on, we've we released Casual at the end of last year, and just one of our dreams was to, and one of our goals, especially for this year, was to eventually get onto national radio, to get onto Radio X playlist, and to get onto Radio One, especially was like the main target. Um, for a couple of weeks into, well, no, six days into January to find out Hugh Stevens had picked us as ones to watch in 2020 for Radio 1 was madness. And then from that, three tracks off of the four on the EP, um, we didn't push Let Go because it's not probably a single. I think you'll probably agree it's not a single for radio. Um, mm. But the other three, we pushed the radio and all of them got played by Hugh Stevens on Radio 1. All of them got Radio X. Um, playlisted on Radio X for Shrink and Casual, which was just insane. So, yeah, the videos now, I can't, I can't always remember the situation because it feels like so much has happened since. <laughs> it's, it's only like, what, half the way into the year and it just feels like a mad year, even though we've not been out of the house for like three and a half months. Yeah, no, I can, I can definitely you relate to that. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of at the stage where I could potentially go back in the studio and I'm just like, ugh this is going to be weird <laughs> yeah I, it, it feels like yesterday that all this started happening and everyone was saying oh it's gonna be so weird but now it's like, like we got together the other day i said to do like a a very socially distanced session that was in an open space and it was the first time we played back together as a band in three three months and it was just weird <laughs> so it's so good so yeah. good to be able to do it, but so weird um 
because we we'd, we'd be with each other every week, um, playing mm. live, rehearsing, or in the studio and stuff. And next minute, we hadn't seen each other for three months, and all we've known for three years is to constantly be so close together that when it comes to December and we normally take a few weeks off around Christmas, we're so tired of each other. And this year doesn't <laughs> feel like it. This year doesn't feel like it's going to be like that because it's like, yeah, with yeah, definitely. Each other. Um, yeah yeah it's uh i don't know it's hard to kind of put into words really especially how it's obviously affected music and things so maybe maybe let's kind of let's end on a positive note obviously let's talk about all the kind of things you've you've mentioned your goals uh what's been like the biggest thing or like the the personal highlight for you maybe like gig wise or or festival wise as well because you played a lot of festivals kind of last year yeah as well i think unfortunately ones that we 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 don't really want to necessarily talk about but i think this summer was going to be some of our biggest goals to hit um from what we've been told which is a shame but it only means it can happen next year hopefully yeah. um so far it's hard to pick for me between made of ale is really up there made of ale was i spent my, my whole life growing up watching bands like royal blood and catfish in the bottom and in the amazons do their first sessions at Made of Elf for BBC Introducing and the fact we got to do the same thing was mad. J2, we stepped up eventually, to, took the jump for, to go from Portland Arms to J2, 350 people, which was nearly double of what the Portland Arms is and we kind of didn't expect to sell it out and it sold out before the day, which was mad. So out of them two, well, I guess for me actually the, the top one would be Isle of Wight Festival. The first thing... I, I was I got into busted as a kid. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. It's uh, yeah. it's part of my. <laughs> I got into busted as a kid. And I I like music and stuff, but it was one Friday night. I was at some friends of my mum and dad's house, and I was sort of just sat in the living room watching TV. And I, was, I started watching the Prodigy headline Isle of Wight Festival on ITV Two, and that was the first point where I was like, right, that's what I want to do. And I remember saying to my dad, that's what I want to do. I was probably like ten years old, and I said to dad that I won't go to that festival until I'm in a band that plays it and I never went and then getting that that call to be asked if we wanted to play it last summer was just mad being there for the weekend was we got to stay Saturday and Sunday which was lovely so yeah for me playing Isle of Wight you know how much I love festivals obviously you helped me yeah. with running one a couple of years <laughs> which, yeah. so I'm, yeah. I'm obsessed with it. to play to play Isle of Wight was, yeah that's that's my top top of the top of the pile yeah and and yeah kind of me going into festivals as well now i know how hard it was, must have been for you to to sort out all that kind of stuff so <laughs> yeah so yeah I can, yeah i can i can now appreciate the other side of it not just kind yeah. of just promoting it but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. nightmare but yeah no, no it's, it's it's so much yeah it's so much fun and it's really rewarding obviously when that when that stuff kind of goes well and, and yeah would you ever want to do that again maybe or a hundred percent river town's not finished it, it's i love festivals and to to be a part of putting a platform on four bands to be able to play a festival in sort of cambridgeshire which i think has a lack of festivals yeah for me is is def- is definitely a of uh, something I want to carry on to do one day. Unfortunately, as you know, at the moment, just the last two summers, the band's been so busy that it just yeah yeah time time wise, unfortunately, I can't make it work. So yeah, one day though, definitely one day I'll go back to making it happen. Yeah, and you've got to get Holly Star, Surgeon Grey, yeah. Oscar. <laughs> oh, wow. You got to bring back we, Razor Fair as well, just just for we, one day. Yes, definitely. I mean, we've said about some amazing gigs in in venues but that first year of Rivertown Hollow Star Searching Grey Oscar Corny Rose Affair yeah. it was just that was one of my favourite days of anything being involved in music it was that first year came together better than what I could ever have imagined yeah and you had the walls there as well uh, the walls had the crowd yeah. was just that was insane <laughs> yeah, it was immense it was so good yeah, yeah. I, I remember what Bill Hollow Star stood on the stack of speakers <laughs> with like three four hundred people in front of him all crammed in together going mad and i just thought this is so cool <laughs> this is yeah. exactly what we envisioned and wanted to do yeah no that was that was a perfect day i think and yeah you you put a lot of work into that those are some good times <laughs> it was good time yeah, thank you for being part of it uh yeah i suppose i was wasn't i yeah yeah yes right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that was yeah no really fun and yeah we should definitely maybe in a couple of years time <laughs> we'll yeah. do another one yeah. We're all getting yeah. old and yeah, yeah, just have a huge party. 
when, when we can, obviously. <laughs> yeah, when we're all allowed to be together again. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we'll just wrap it up there. I think, and um, obviously, if you haven't or if you are, just keep streaming the EP because I guess that's all you can do right now to <laughs> to, to support support the bands and support Tom. So yeah, just keep streaming the EP and and eventually buy a ticket to a gig when you can. <laughs> yes, definitely. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Tom. Thanks for doing this. Thank, thank you very much. Cheers, Tom. <laughs>